So in this video, I'll be going through the Criterion B Strand 1 section of my ePortfolio report that managed to score me a 7 out of 7 for design. So Criterion B Strand 1 talks about developing a design specification, which outlines the success criteria for the design for solution based on the data collected. By data collected, they refer to the research that you collected, the research that you conducted in Criterion A Strand 4 because the research and sort of everything else you did before that helped you to come up with the design brief. So strand one of Criterion A is sort of just a continuation of that design brief in which the main idea of what you write is the same, but it's no longer brief, it has to be more specific. So that's basically the main idea of Criterion B strand one. It's probably one of the easiest strands for Criterion A because it's simply just a continuation where you add slightly more detail here and there. So as usual, I'm using the Access FM model, which stands for aesthetics, cost, customer, environment, safety, size, function, and materials. Because for me, this makes it easy to break down the features of any product in general, so that I know exactly what part of the product I have to talk about, what features I have to specify. So, if you don't know what model to use, this is a very good model to start with. And since I also use this model for the design brief, it makes it easier to follow up. So if you were to look at what I did, I think I should generally just explain what my, pro my product in the end was. So what I did is I, folk I centered my product around talking about Japanese values and beliefs uh, in order to show the topic of international mindedness. So what I did is I used 3D origami in order to create two Japanese cranes. And I placed those cranes on a sort of toy stand with Jap a Japanese design that I created using paint. And then on the toy stand, there's a QR code in which users can scan. And it shows them to a digital brochure, which sort of just shows the Japanese values and beliefs that my product depicts. And it also shows the uh, user how to make the 3D origami cranes on their own with detailed instructions and all. That was my basis on how to deliver the concept of international mindedness because just showing Japanese values and beliefs wasn't sufficient. There had to be a way for the user to sort of interact and make themselves more involved with the culture. So what I chose to do is to provide them with a way in order to make the product themselves. Because the product itself, which involves a Japanese crane, 3D origami, are part of the Japanese culture. So that's basically what I did. So moving on to my report. Starting with aesthetics, this is one of the major things that probably is different compared to the design brief. Because when you talk about specifying things, it's mainly the aesthetics part that you would specify more. For instance, before, if I mentioned that I would only use primary colors or something like that, here I would mention the specific colors I use. I would use a pattern of white and red, a pattern of iris purple and fire orange. So I can specify colors like this. And the reason for choosing this color is because they reflect Japanese values. It's important to always sort of give a justification for anything specific like this, because you, because there's you, every part of your design should have some basis as to why it's like that, because that's the whole reason you do your criteria e research and everything. You sort of gain an idea of what sort of product you want to create, what sort of design you want. So you use that as a basis for your justification on certain design criteria you have. And for example, if there I mentioned that my brochure will generally include the details of my product. And another example is that in the design brief in Criterion A Strand 4, I may have just mentioned that I would create a brochure. But here I'll specifically mention what information to put in the brochure. So I'll mention information about the art of 3D origami, which includes the definition and history of 3D origami as well as the Japanese beliefs and values behind the specific good luck ornament. So the value, belief, and history of it, and its color scheme, so the symbolism of both of the color schemes that I chose to use, as well as instructions on how to make the specific 3D origami ornament. So I mentioned how I'll do this. I'll depict the arrangement and positions of 2D triangular pieces. 
which are the pieces that you have to connect together to make 3D origami. So this is the sort of detail that's especially required. So the part that you should focus more on is the aesthetics because that's the part that will change the most from your design brief in Cartier A. Otherwise, your cost will pretty much be the same. The only thing I really changed is I mentioned specifically where the cost the fifth, the cost would come from. So for me, I mentioned that the cost would come from a set of paper cardboard containing 100 pieces of paper cardboard. So I mentioned what material I used and why where this cost came from. My customer is pretty much the same. Environmental as well. Any environmental negative or positive environmental impacts that your product could have or anything that you sort of avoided to prevent any environmental impacts. And one thing that you should be very careful of is the size. This also really depends on your product. For my product specifically, because I didn't, at this stage, I didn't decide that I would be making cranes as my final product. So I only knew that I would be making some sort of animal 3D good luck ornament. So depending on the animal, the dimensions would change. So I only could mention sizes that I was sure the three sketches later on would fulfill. So you'll have to consider that if you want to make your 3D, your three sketches vary a lot, you'll have to make sure that you don't put anything too specific here, such that it's difficult to vary your sketches later on. So for my product specifically, the way of making the product with the triangular units would be the same. So that is one measurement I included. Another me measurement would be the digital brochure in which the size would pretty much be the same, just the information would change depending on what animal I chose. And the toy stand, the radius would change depending on the animal chosen as well, but the height would be fixed. And just to keep things, to, uh, uh, keep things under wraps, I included a maximum length and height for each 3D origami figure, because in the end, it's just an ornament. There's, there should be a maximum size that it shouldn't overcome. So if you also can't predict the size of your product as well, you can also include just generally a minimum height, a minimum size or maximum size that you want to keep. That's a good way to sort of give something, but also not make it too specific such that it's difficult to make your sketch later on. And safety, just anything that can make your product safe overall. And you can also include how to use your product such that it's safe to use. I mean, I just generally mentioned the safest way to use the product would be to place it in an area that could support the figures well or and generally avoid any unnecessary contact with the figures as it may collapse. So you can mention these small points to, make, to determine how you can use it um, safely. Because my product is an ornament, there's not much to do with safety, but some products may have a lot of safety concerns. And the function, generally how to use the product, so the QR codes can be sc scanned to direct users to the brochure. Within my brochure is also a poster in order to make the specific triangular units, because that's the basis for 3D origami. And otherwise, I also mentioned that the instructions are included to I included instructions to make 3D origamis. And I also just explained how that connects to the function of my product in general, which is to enhance international mindedness. So when it comes to the function, you always go back to what the global context, what your the statement of inquiry, what you're mainly focusing on. And material here, you can sort of put more specific materials if you made it general in the design brief. And you can also give an explanation, justification for your materials. For example, I use hard paper cardboard as a flimsier material may make the figures prone to collapsing. And I also used acrylic paint, which may be more visible on cardboard compared to other forms of coloring like color pencils or crayons. Just any form of justification will do. And one more thing that's good to include is sort of a goal on what you want to achieve. So one way to make your goal specific and detailed is to use this smart model in which you mention a specific goal. You mention how you will measure that goal at the end of the entire process. You mention what you will do in order to attain or achieve your goal. 
And you mentioned why this goal is relevant or realistic. And you also mentioned the time frame for your goal. So specific, just what do you want to create? And you can connect it to the function of your goal, as well as the target audience that you want to connect. Measurable most of the time, it will be the survey form that you would do in Criterion A, because that's what you will do at the end to assess your product and to sort of come up with improvements of your product. That's what you can always mention for measurable. Attainable, achievable for what I wrote is mainly I want to figure out what my target audience wants. This can also be done through the Criterion B survey because while the survey is mainly for choosing among your three sketches, it could also be a good, a good way to look at what your target audience wants if you specifically survey your target audience. And realistic, relevant, why this sort of uh, goal, what's for why this product is important using the concept of international mindedness. Basically, you focus on your topic for the year. And time bound, it depends on your school when they want you to finish it, but you should generally have a goal on when you want to accomplish your design project. And that's the end of the video for Criterion B strand one. Oh, one more thing. If we were to look at generally what the strands here say, the strands here are a bit general. They say create three plus success criteria. Three plus generally is a loose criteria. You can, it's best to look at every feature of a product if you can. And when they say explain what research shows each criteria is needed, explain what research shows each specification will help achieve the success criteria. They don't especially need you to provide evidence from your research or anything like that. It's just a way to show that what you're doing in Criterion B strand one should be directly connected to what you did in Criterion A strand four. There should not be any major changes made, it, made unless you specifically justify and explain. But other than that, Criterion B strand one is simply an extension to specify what you wrote in your design brief it should really not be any different. And your design brief is generally based off of the data collected in Criterion A, so indirectly, it does connect to your research. And that's how you would get a seven for this strand. Thank you for watching.